auditions. An audition could possibly be one of the most nerve-wracking and time-consuming events that a musician can go through. In contrast with the performance, which often includes a group of musicians performing together, an audition takes place with one performer, outnumbered by the judges. As an up-and-coming college music major, going through these auditions are a part of my college application process. And through preparation for these auditions, I came uh, to a realization about human interactions. You see, in these kinds of auditions, musicians, uh, musicians are asked to play various excerpts. An excerpt is a short section from a known piece of uh, music, and the excerpts are chosen to display the performer's knowledge of the work as well as their skills as an overall musician. And when musicians prepare a certain excerpt, one of the first things that the performer should do is look up past recordings of the piece of music to see how groups have played it in the past. And when I listen to a recording, I put into consideration which group is playing it to make sure it's a credible group, as well as the time period in which it was performed and recorded, which has a significant impact on how they perform. I was going through various recordings of Scheherazade, a symphonic suite based on the stories of 1001 Nights, and I found a magnificent recording played by the Soviet Union Symphony Orchestra. It was recorded in 1969, right in the middle of the Cold War, where obviously there were a ton of tensions between the US and Soviet Union. However, the recorded piece of music could be listened to and enjoyed by all. You see, music looks past social tensions and discontinuities, skipping right to the basic elements that bring joy and passions to humans as a whole. Countries at war would be able to enjoy and understand each other's music, even if they can't understand each other. In fact, many cultures simply don't get along because they don't see past their differences. But if someone were to combine all the instruments from those respective cultures into an ensemble, it would be a pretty sweet gig. And that's the reason why I study music. My name is David Dong, and my topic in ISM this year is music education. Ultimately, I'm studying the way that people communicate with each other through instruments, putting into account what people like to hear and what they look for in music. Bringing a piece of music to life is more than just replicating what you read from the black ink on paper, but it's playing your instrument in a way that resonates in the hearts of people around you. As stated by George Enescu, a famous Romanian composer, Perfection, which is the passion of so many people, does not interest me. What is important in art is to vibrate oneself and make others vibrate. I hope that one day my music will be able to vibrate in the hearts of future generations to keep this wonderful form of communication known as music alive. Through your research assessments in ISM, I have learned more about the importance of feel when playing music. My first research assessment was over Jacques de la Cluse, who was arguably one of the most important percussion composers in history. One of his quotes is, don't play percussion, but play music. Music. And De La Cluz was mostly known for his compositions for snare drum, but how can you turn that into music? So playing snare drum is like playing a piano. A piano has 88 keys, but, the, but 87 of those keys are broken, and you're left with one, one old key to play. So yeah, turn that into music. Well, how do you do that? And um, in that sense, I can relate to the listener when they're unable to enjoy or understand a snare drum performance. However, snare drum can still have the same tension building and resolution as any other melodic instrument. For example, in this specific De La Cluse etude, there is a 6-8 time signature. This can mean a lot of things in music regarding feel, but in certain cases, such as this etude, a 6-8 uh, time signature implies a waltz-like feel. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, kind of like a waltz. And a lot of rhythms in this etude are accompanied, um, accompany this feel by playing in groups of three. And since six is divisible by three, the rhythms feel nice and natural when played. However, when a different kind of rhythm is played, there is rhythmic dissonance. So in here, now groupings of five are presented. And for those of you that are good at math, six is not divisible by five. So at some point in the music, the waltz isn't as easily felt. And this could be considered one of the points of tension in the piece and shows how rhythm alone can still create music in its own way. My next research assessment was over redefining sustain and the role. The inability to maintain a constant or sustained sound is a problem exclusive to percussion instruments, as well as a couple of others, such as guitar or piano. The instruments that are best at sustaining a note would probably be wind instruments, or even singers. A singer can hold out a continuous note and change how fast they're pushing out the air to change the volume and depth. Now, percussionists can fake a sustained sound by doing rolls, which is essentially playing consecutive notes to blend all the sounds into one continuous sound. Now, the types of rolls include single stroke rolls, which is simply alternating the hands at a faster rate to produce one longer sound. There are also double stroke rolls, where each hand plays two notes to get twice the speed. 
And then finally, there are buzz rules. And for those of you that don't know what a buzz rule is, a buzz rule is when you let the stick drop and the rebound catches it. And then as the stick keeps bouncing, the, the notes get closer together. And with a buzz rule, a percussionist adds pressure to the stick to make each of those notes progressively closer together. So the overall goal of the roll is for each hand to do that same action and then eventually connect all the notes into one smooth buzz roll. And then those are the three ways that, uh, th those are the three main ways that percussionists use rolls to connect all of their notes. Now these types of rolls work to create a, conti um, a seemingly continuous sound with certain rolls sounding better on different instruments. Right now I'm playing on a practice snare drum which has a very super short sound so the buzz roll sounds more sustained. This could be different on other percussion instruments. My next research assessment was over the characteristics of Viennese timpani, as well as the intentions of Richard Hochreiner, the percussionist that designed the instruments. Now timpani are large drums typically made with a copper bowl with a large calfskin head stretched over it. And some key differences between Viennese timpani and international timpani are that Viennese timpani have goatskin heads, while international timpani use calfskin. And the article contained results from an experiment that showed that Viennese timpani produce more tone and get less articulate sounds than international timpani. So this will make the timpani seem more melodic and less like a big metal drum. I was also fortunate enough to be able to conduct informational interviews with professionals. Their, um, their experience and expertise will be very useful for me in this year and many years to come. So my first interview was with Richard Gibson, He's the director of the School of Music at TCU, and he uh, mainly taught me that a teacher must be dynamic and inspiring. He compared teaching, to, um, teaching a student to a basketball game. So you have the goal of winning the game, but you'll never know where the ball is at any certain point in the game. So you'll have to be able to adapt to each situation in order to win. So students all have their own individual needs as well as their own learning styles, and a teacher has to be able to teach it all. My next interview was with Mr. Zach Shear. He's the percussion director at Capel High School, and the main thing that he taught me was that connections are crucial when looking for jobs. Mr. Shearer emphasized the importance of connections because when he, um, he was able to get a job at Capel High School, which already has access, um, a successful band program because the teachers um, were, he was already connected to were all in Texas. My next interview was with Mr. Doug Howard. He's the principal percussionist of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. And the main thing that he taught me is that the mastery of fundamentals is crucial to any orchestral percussionist. A large part of being an orchestral percussionist is practicing for auditions to win a job. And Mr. Howard really emphasized the importance of those fundamentals as an orchestral percussionist. So most, most orchestral music requires the complete mastery of basic fundamentals rather than the flashy stuff seen in marching bands or rock bands. The fundamentals have to be so well practiced that a musician should be able to execute them perfectly every time. Now Mr. Howard is currently my mentor, and I spend most of my mentor visits attending his orchestra rehearsals, observing how him and other percussionists perform and make musical decisions in a fast-paced orchestra. And this year, for my original work, I arranged a percussion ensemble for seven percussionists based on music found in an online game, MapleStory. An arrangement is a musical reconceptualization of a previously composed work. And the actual music was played mostly by instruments in a full orchestra, and I was simply transferring the melodic ideas uh, from the game onto percussion instruments. I was motivated to arrange the music from this game because I really enjoyed the way that the, the, the music from a certain location sounded. And here's just uh, the first page of the full score of the arrangement. So a full score shows all parts of the ensemble, so that the conductor can see all the parts of the piece while rehearsing. So prior to actually composing the piece, I listened to various tracks played in the game location, and I assigned the parts that I heard to percussion instruments. So for example, one of the Maple Story tracks is called Remembrance, and we're going to listen to part of this track, and I'll just kind of walk you guys through of my thought process while listening to the tracks. Ooh, looks like the video is restricted. <laughs> 